This one's titled, EB demands me to leave my seat and complains about me being too fat and severely damages my irreplaceable property. Determined man practically saves my life. Alright, I like to write, so this is a bit of a long one, I hope you all don't mind. This happened a while ago, back when I was 15 and I had really bad tendonitis at the time in both of my arms. I go to an art school, so I draw a lot, but apparently my hands and arms are too weak and can't take strain. It isn't even uncommon for me anymore. So I was sitting on the bus one morning. It was still winter. The sun's effect were barely visible. Tired people dragging themselves to work all over the place like they were about to die. But they can't because they all owe to Satan himself. My bot was resting on a seat right next to the window, meaning there was an empty seat on my left. It was a Monday, the day when I have all sorts of classes involving gigantic sheets of paper and an equivalently huge folder for them. One that contains all of my past drawings and paintings from that year. Since the teacher had decided that it was the day to rate them, this particular item, containing the very best works of my life, was sitting on the floor near my legs, also propped up by the seat before me, so it took up the least space it needed. I also had my, then, rather flat backpack in my lap, but that kinda didn't matter. It was a quite peaceful morning. Ladies and gentlemen, this was when the sinister screams of sorrowful souls hit my ear and their cold washed through my tired face. The bus had opened the door at the next stop and along with the cold there stood an enormous entitled mother of our story with her entitled, twice my size, about nine year old, kid, checking for empty seats of course because they needed to sit down. The mother's eyes fell on the seat right next to me but honestly why else would I be here if they didn't? Sitting there, submerged in my thought, when suddenly this rather large woman is standing like one meter away from me, huffing and glaring at my direction with her kid munching on something from the questionable side of the food spectrum. Then, out of the blue, our dearest EM just had to address me out of all people. EM, could you please move your fat butt and give the seat to us, like right now translation is quite accurate this is a pretty vivid memory of mine as i didn't want trouble i whispered a quick sure slowly since it was extremely painful to use my hands lifted up my bag and folder adjusted them so they didn't cause a problem just in case i couldn't find a handrail and was about to stand up and leave the seat when ek launched itself onto the seat on my left perfectly blocking my way out. I tried to convince the kid to stand up for another second so his mum could sit down too, but for no avail. This was when EM became a lot more impatient. EM, could you hurry up a little? Do you know who I am? Yeah, sure, sure. Me, I'm sorry, but your child is blocking the way and he won't get up. I'd really appreciate if you... EM, well, you better find your way out now, because I want to sit down. Hurry, I can't stand it all day. Me. Just please tell your son to stand up for a second, or otherwise I can't. EM. I said get up. What is taking so long? I am one of the shyer people of this planet. At this point, I was shaking like a leaf. EK wouldn't listen either. I was flabbergasted and absolutely terrified, on the verge of crying and unable to move my body. Half of the boss was watching too. EM, maybe if you weren't so big, you would be able to get out of there. It's all your fault that you're stuck. My baby is feeling uncomfortable too. He can't eat in peace because of you. You're a monster and you're separating the two of us. Get out of there now or I'll make you. We need our seats right now no idea how I was separating them, but shh, you know, she knows it all better. Then she approached me and, reaching over her XXXL son, and yanked me out to between the lines of seats, miserably landing face down on the bus floor. Now, they both clearly saw that I had a something big and therefore important, so let's destroy it. I assume that's how their brain works. Then she uses her superhuman evil powers and telepathically commanded the demon spawn to finally get off and stomp on my fragile folder and bag. I also partly on me, 
he was surprised, heavy, and EM decided it would be fun to join. These inferior beta humans then continued to destroy me and my precious work in front of about 50 other people and no one gave a poop. There was no way I could get up by myself. I felt like being stomped on by a herd of cattle. No one gave a poop, no one, except for a kind man who got through the small bus crowd and wasted no time to help me. He pulled me up and handed me my stuff from the ground, made sure I found a handrail, then quickly stepped between me and those wonderful people who had been trying to murder me over a seat, I guess. EM What are you doing? She will pay for separating me from my baby with her fat body. Now, KM wasn't going to accept such primitive words. No, he was a madman. KM Uh, ma'am? I'll have to ask you to apologise. Give her a seat and leave her alone, in this order, along with your kid. EM There's no way I'm apologising to such a fat pig. Let me get her. Was she insecure? Is this the reason people are calling other people things they aren't? KM Ma'am, please don't make me call the authorities. Apologise. Let her sit back, since her wrists are obviously injured. Thank God someone notices bandages. She probably has a concussion because of you. He wasn't wrong. Then leave the vehicle. They did a few more rounds of this before EM tried to shove KM to the side to get to me. I was still shaking and people still weren't intending to help. To my surprise, KM was still standing right where he was. In fact, he was holding EM's fist, which looked like she was trying to punch him. Crazy. A few more punch and kick attacks later from both EM and EK towards KM, my saviour made up his mind and punched back. Boy was it a punch. EK was terrified and started to run away while EM was huffing and shouting about KM disrespecting women. The bus driver finally came out and removed the two from the bus. The rest of the ride was silent other than KM asking if I was alright. Turns out KM was the greatest pucking person alive and offered me to help me go to the hospital or school. I kindly refused. Thanked him, everything, but he insisted to watch over me as I walked to the tram. Although most of my stuff was useless after this incident, I had a concussion, my body was sore, I worked night after night after that to have enough drawings until the end of the semester. It was quite a fun day to say at least. Nothing is sweeter than justice and that man practically saved my life. The world needs more KMs. I couldn't agree more. This one's titled, A Nerf War Turned Sour. This was many years ago, don't remember exactly how old I was, but I was somewhere between the ages of 10 to 11. EP equals entitled parent, AN equals RSAT neighbor, LS equals little poop slash entitled parents kid. So, my street growing up, like many, had block parties once or twice a year. Sometimes a bunch of us kids would get together and have a massive nerf war. Based on the fact I'm posting this here, if you assume that this would be our final nerf war during those block parties, you'd be correct. So, all was going well. A group of us had gotten together and some other kids from school had come from a few streets over. We started our nerf war and we were having a good time. Most of the fighting was in the backyard of LS who I considered a friend at the time. He was part of it as well, so we were all fine being in his backyard. Then, all of a sudden, AN storms out of their house and starts yelling at us for playing in LS backyard and us using his nerf guns without permission. Then LS runs up from the block party. So, during the game, LS apparently left without telling anyone and just assumed we'd notice and would leave his yard, at least. This was his excuse for not telling us, but that will be important later. As we were all preoccupied shooting foam darts at each other, no one noticed him leave. So, LS runs up and starts yelling at everyone to get out of his yard and drop his guns. Then, EP shows up and starts grabbing everyone's gun yelling that he's gonna get us arrested for trespassing on their property. 
My Nerf gun had recently broke, so I was borrowing one from another friend. I say the one I was holding wasn't his and then gave it back to the kid who owned it. On my way out of his yard, I see LS snickering with his other friends about how they managed to get everyone in trouble. It was at this point I decided he is a little poop as I knew he was lying about his excuse. EP starts bad mouthing us all to our parents and trying to get us in trouble. I never heard about it from my parents and I'm unsure if everyone else involved ever did. Nothing else ever came of the arrest threats obviously and I've avoided LS ever since. Edits Clarifying some details about LS being a little poop. Addition So, for those who are wondering why this ended our nerf wars, LS owned just over half the guns we used every time, so when he decided to become a little poop, none of us wanted to play with him again.